So now, let us, uh, you know, just, just to make sure you get the concept of uh, gross margin and uh, net margin, we're going to look at an example. Two very popular companies, Amazon.com and Google.com. Amazon.com's gross margin is 24%, whereas Google.com's gross margin is 65%. Now, if anybody who is not very well versed in finance is going to look at this and say, oh my god, Amazon is a terribly run company, their gross margin is one third of what Google's is. But you, being a corporate finance professional and having learned what a gross margin is, you will know that just because their gross margins are different does not mean one company is worse than the other company. No, Amazon.com is the number one e-commerce company, Google is the number one search company, and both are outstanding world-classly managed companies. The reason Amazon's gross margin is only 24% of their revenues is because what does Amazon sell? You know, let's say books. It's an e-commerce that sells books. Let's say the average book costs ten dollars. They sell a book for ten dollars. How much do they keep out of the ten dollars? A typical book probably costs Amazon about five, six dollars, right? So out of every ten dollars they sell, they only get to keep four or five dollars, if not lesser, based on what uh, uh, categories of products you're talking about. So whereas when you come to Google, Google is a search company, they make all their money when you click on those advertisements um, in your search results. So let's say every time you click on that advertisement, you let, let's say the average advertisement is $5 a click, the advertisers are paying Google $5 a click. For every $5 Google takes in, Google has very little expense to serve those ads. It's not like the Amazon book, they have not very little expense. All the expense to serve that ad is probably some electricity at some server farm going on, a bunch of computers that's processing the search requests. That is very minimal compared to actually the cost of a product like a book, which is why most of the money that Google gets as revenue, Google gets to uh, actually use it as an operating expense in terms of R&D, giving their employees free food, having fancy offices, uh, you know, getting into 500 different other products and, and all of that. Whereas Amazon doesn't have the luxury because they are a very, they are a much lower cost of um, cost of goods company, uh, gross margin company, and that's not a bad thing. Retail is always a low gross margin margin business, uh, but you know it, it's all about efficiency in, in retail. That being said, now let's say you know you went to a restaurant like this with your parents, right? Something like this. It looks pretty fancy. I, I can already see, you know, I'm going to sit down at this table here with my mother and I'm going to order, let's say, paneer tikka. Hmm? Now, it looks like a really fancy restaurant, so I'm going to assume the a paneer tikka plate here is going to cost about 600 rupees. Hmm? My mother is going to find out that paneer tikka, plate of paneer tikka costs 600 rupees and she's going to go, oh my god, a plate of paneer tikka is 600 rupees? Imagine how much profit these people are making. Okay, let's stop there. Now, when she says, "Imagine how much profit these people are making when it's only fine uh, when it's when they charge six hundred rupees for a plate of paneer tikka," the thought process that's going through her head is she's thinking paneer probably costs fifty rupees max. Maybe they import their paneer, fine, whatever, fifty rupees. Their tikka, masala, oil, and all that stuff put together, another fifty rupees. So, hundred rupees is the cost of making this paneer. Why are they charging me five hundred rupees extra? So you, you realize what I'm trying to get at. When she says they're making so much profit, her expense calculation is stopping at gross margin. The cost of the pani, the cost of the tikka and the masala and all of that is the cost of the ingredients, the cost of the gross margin. What she's not taking into account is she's not taking into account this, you know, fancy lights up here. I've never seen lights like that at a restaurant, all these great ceilings and walls, the carpet, fancy chairs, maybe, you know, white gloved hosts and hostesses serving you stuff. Those the operating expenses she's not taking into account. She's just taking into account the cost of the food and telling you it's a great gross margin. So next time you take your mother out and she tells you something is so expensive, you can actually explain to her the mistake she's making. Okay, maybe she just really won't agree with you. It's a mistake, but you can try anyway. Now. Let's say you are passing in front of a restaurant that looks something like this. There's a fancy restaurant, there's some flags here, looks like a fancy road, and there's this huge limousine car parked outside where you know they, they take their guests home late night if they can't get, get home by themselves. Okay. 
So you might, you, you, you probably notice, you probably walk by a restaurant like this or a hair saloon in a really posh area. And, and I, I would wonder, how do these guys make a profit when they're located in, in an area like this? They have to pay so much on rent, they have to pay so much on like insurance, taxes, and all kinds of stuff. How do they still make a profit? When I say that, I'm actually talking about the operating expenses because I don't even know what the restaurant sells. I don't know what how, what their mini prices. I'm making a judgment saying they have to pay so much in rent. They have to buy this huge limousine car. Those the rent and the cost of the limousine car are not cost of goods sold that contribute your gross margin, but they fall somewhere here, which essentially contributes to your operating expenses and your operating margin. So here I'm actually talking about their operating margin. So now, hopefully, you have a fairly good hang about what an income statement is all about, the different components of an income statement, uh, why is it used, uh, the different terminologies used, and you even know how to build a very basic income statement. Yeah. So in the next session, what we'll actually be doing is we will still stay with income statement, but we will take a special case of the income statement and we'll talk about special scenarios and revenues and expenses like revenue recognition, accrual accounting and cash accounting. And we'll also focus on some financial ratios that will help you analyze an income statement better and actually make an intelligent call or decision on the operating efficiencies of a company. Uh, that is it for this session. Thank you very much. I will uh, see you soon in the next session.